<laughs> it's so interesting. I, over the last probably week since we had the session, I've remembered more from when I was younger that makes more sense now. I used to have these really lucid, like astral travel experiences when I was younger. And I used to have what I thought was a dream, like this recurrent dream of getting sucked through my bedroom wall out into the outside. And it used to hurt almost. And it, you know, it would always almost like wake me up when it would happen. So now like at, literally like a day after we had our session, it clicked. I was like, they were sucking me out of my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> they were They're literally taking me out of my bedroom. I've had wow. so many of those different experiences and I just, I had never connected the dots before. Yes. Yes. And now we can, you know, connect yes. them and know what it meant. Um, so yes. when you and I first talked, yeah. um, you, you told me of a couple of, of your experiences that had a big question mark. I had these experiences and I don't know what happened. Right. And the best part of this is that, you know, working with someone like you, I, I or really with everyone, I never know where you're going to go. Right. Bye. Love you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I never know where anyone's going to go, but I made sure to write that down because you know, they, they showed you that lifetime, but it didn't really answer those big questions. And so I, I wanted to make sure that you had closure. <laughs> and boy, right. oh boy, did you get closure, right? <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. So, so speaking of that, y'all, so what Myra was talking about is, so I had a couple of instances um, several years ago. Um, the first instance specifically was I'd gone on a girl's trip into uh, the Shenandoah mountains uh, back in 2019. And y'all, I gotta be honest. Like I, I say this with no disrespect to the people that I was with, but we were just not an energetic match. Um, and I was not happy on that trip. I, if I could do it over again, I probably would have skipped it. Um, but by that night, um, you know, the night before we were about to leave and come back home, I was ready to come home and I went to sleep so sad. Like I just remember being so sad on the phone with my husband saying, if I had driven, I would have come <laughs> home basically. <laughs> so I had a dream, what I thought was a dream. Uh, that night I woke up in the middle of the night and the room was filling up with a, like a big bright white light. It was so bright that one of the other girls that was with me on the trip, I remember vividly her sitting up and looking out towards the window because that's where the light was coming from. It wasn't just a white light. Um, there was also colored lights coming from outside as well. And our curtains were kind of cracked. So I could see through the crack of the curtains, there was the mountains out in the distance and I could see a spinning disc that was a UFO basically out in the distance. Um, there was the parking lot of the hotel and then across from the parking lot was the mountain. And that's where that UFO was hovering basically. But in that dream, I felt hesitant to go to the window. I felt almost like scared. Like I didn't want to go look. Um, and it made me pause. And that was the last thing I could remember. I couldn't remember anything after that. Yes. <laughs> so... <laughs> So then Myra <laughs> took me to that day and yes. watching it back was amazing. Um, like Myra gives you kind of an introductory hypnosis to do kind of to prepare you to go under once you have your session. And even doing that, I was starting to see additional memories from that. Um, I was seeing myself in my pajamas, basically standing outside there was like a slate awning um, and I could feel the coldness of that slate on my feet looking up at the UFO outside. Yeah. And we basically figured out I was taken onto that ship and we went back home for a night, basically. Yes, we did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. And just watching that was so incredibly emotional, but yet, it made other things in my life make sense almost after that. 
So let me sort of explain um, a, a little more. So for those of you that, you know, some of you pro maybe understand what she's saying and maybe if you still have some questions. When she was sleeping, okay, what happens is you, you do leave your body. Every night you leave your body, okay? You're, you're not, your soul is not going to sit laying there bored <laughs> while right. you are catching some Zs. So you are tethered. You astral travel every night. You go places, and the majority obviously don't have memory at all. I know I don't. There's occasional when I, um, when I set the intention to astral travel, I do remember where I'm going. Okay, but mm -hmm. for the most part, everyone goes, and so that's what happened with Christina is that. Her, her body stayed in the bed and she traveled outside of herself, went onto her spaceship and they did some beautiful healing and yes. Yes. I thought it was so beautiful that when I woke up, I felt safe. That was the first thing that I said. I said, I woke up feeling so safe. And when I had gone to bed, I had felt so sad. But it was almost like they had let me know and reminded me, you're safe. Everything's okay. You're going to be okay. I was begging wow. them not to take me back. Yes. <laughs> and they basically probably told me to cool my jets. And yes, yes. You're fine. <laughs> Just go back to sleep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but so I, I had that experience. Um, it was so, so powerful. You know, I, it left me feeling better after the fact. Um, so that answered that first experience. So then literally, um, it was probably maybe less than a year later because that experience happened in 2019. Um, then in 2020, it was just a little ways into 2020, y'all. The pandemic had just started. Um, and I was in my car. I was going to meet my co-host for our podcast. Um, we were going to record. Um, and I had to run into the local grocery store. I had to grab one thing. It was a box of Velveeta. <laughs> I just had to grab it for that dinner tonight or for that dinner that night. Um, yeah. It took me five minutes, maybe if that um, I ran in, there was no one in the store. When I walked into the store, it was maybe five minutes after nine o'clock in the morning. And I needed to be to Missy's no later than nine 30. When I got out of the store and turned my car on, it was two minutes to 10. And I literally, I, my, my jaw hit the floor. I thought, what the heck happened? I thought maybe my clock was off. So I scrambled for my phone and the time was still the same. So then I, I'm calling my, my friend. I'm like, I don't know what happened. I literally just walked into the store and now it's this time. She was just as puzzled as I was. And I never really had any answers to that. So then I asked Myra, can maybe we find out what happened to this missing time? And boy, did we find out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so amazing. Exactly. she took me back to that day um and asked specifically what happened while she was in the store what happened during that missing time and it was hard to describe it while i was seeing it happen but basically i watched my physical body walk into the store yeah. And it was like everything around me froze. It was quite literally like somebody took a remote and pressed a pause button to reality. Everybody right. that was in their cars next to us froze. Um, Crazy. Was, I can remember. Yeah, I can remember seeing a man basically walking ahead of me in the store and he froze. <laughs> so everything just stopped but me in my car. And it was my right. spirit body basically still in the car. They lifted me in my car. The whole car. Up, the whole car uh -huh. up into the ship. <laughs> yeah. What was even more surprising to me was why that even lent, I think, more validity as to why. Because I had suspected that I had been sick with COVID earlier in that year, but it was before COVID had hit the news. I had just been really ill and I could not shake upper respiratory infection that I had had. I had had a cough for months. My energy had been really off. Like I couldn't keep my energy levels up. Um, so it was interesting, like backtracking in time, my health improved after 
that missing time episode. Um, but they basically said that they worked on me in the ship. They put me under this big bright white light and took the energy of COVID out of my body um, and removed that energy. They said, it's, it's messing with your energy. We're just going to take it from you. And they said, you're going to realize that you've missed time. So you need to be prepared for that. <laughs> Wow. And then they just <clears throat> set me back down, car and everything, set me back down. Yes. My physical body came out of the store, yep. reintegrated with my physical and spirit body. And then I realized that I had missed time. <laughs> Guys, I mean, that is honestly, it's amazing. When, when I heard you saying that in the session, I was, I was blown away that they can push the button and just freeze time. And this is, this just goes to show how this is a game. It's just not right. Real. It is not real. And God, I don't, I don't, I, I don't think I've ever, I don't pay attention too much to clocks, but I, it makes me wonder. Yeah. I'm sort of kind of like, oh, look, it's 1130. <laughs> but, I, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if this has happened to other people where I'm sure it has, where there's a, a gap of time missing. Right. <laughs> that was so, so good hearing. And I couldn't believe right. it when you said, Myra, I'm seeing my whole car go up into the sky. Yeah. 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 Y'all, I have a vivid memory of when they were putting me back in my car. It felt like I was really being put back in my car. They were giving me a hug. There was, I think if I remember right, there were three beings in there with us and they were giving me a hug. They were telling me bye. They were basically shoving me back in my seat, shutting the yes. door. But when they were lowering my car back down onto the pavement, it made my head hurt. And I felt my head hurt almost. It wasn't painful, but it was like a pressure feeling. So it was almost like the energy was acclimating somehow. And I was feeling that, um, but it was just, it was so, so interesting. <laughs> And I remembered something also um, that I wanted to tell you. So I had made a journal entry um, at the very end of 2019. Um, it was probably about three or four months before I had my missing time. But I had had a dream that I had remembered and written down when I had woken up. But I had written down that I dreamt that I had seen this sparkly kind of like silverish white UFO in our bedroom. Um, I could see it almost like it was like a scaled model. And mm. I felt like my spirit guides were in the room telling me at that particular time I smoked cigarettes and they were telling me it was imperative that I stopped smoking cigarettes. They would not elaborate on why, but they were insistent. It's really important that you stop. And if you stop, you won't have any withdrawals. We'll help you with it. So when I woke up that morning, I didn't want to smoke cigarettes. I had like this aversion. So I told my husband, I think that I'm just going to stop. I don't know why, but I feel like I need to. <laughs> I thought that I might have like <laughs> lung cancer or something. And they oh were basically gosh, like scary. prepping me for it. Yes. But they were really prepping me for COVID. They knew that I was getting ready to get sick. And if I was smoking, I might not make it through that. Wow. So wow. that was the feeling that I got, they basically came to me again in this lucid dream experience and warned me. Um, so it's, yeah, very interesting. <laughs> it sure is. Wow. Have you had any dreams after our session? Anything? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've had a dream um, that I was sitting on that same beach um, that I was seeing in the very beginning of our regression. Yes. Um, and remembering it now, I've actually had several dreams about that over the years, um, just in various different like perspectives, almost I've just seen it like I'm at different vantage points. Um, I've had dreams about that. I've also had more vivid dreams of the beings that I saw when we were in the regression session. Um, I've seen the three of them. And I realized that they were actually three of my spirit guides that I have currently. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. really interesting. Yeah. It's so crazy. And I it, feel like it'll just keep coming with time. 
Yes, yes. Um, if you are just joining us and you have not heard Christina's, um, I, I had posted three parts as well as she, she has um, some parts on her TikTok as well on her page. Please have a listen to it. It's it's really, really beautiful, very emotional to hear her um, understand why right. she's here, right? Right, right. Wow. That was a that was another, I think, very powerful thing. Um, you know, I I had heard other people's stories, you know, in years, you know, that I've been doing this work. Um, you know, people talking about being volunteers and things like that that have come to earth, you know, to kind of help raise the collective vibration. And it always sounded familiar to me, but I didn't know for sure. So I didn't ever want to, you know, jump to a conclusion for myself. <laughs> but yeah. I think that was one of the reasons why I wanted to have this session um, because I had that inclination, but I never had any, you know, concrete proof of that. So I wanted to really explore that further. Yes, yes, and you <laughs> sure did. So why don't you, I'm going to be putting um, the, the full session on my YouTube channel tomorrow. Okay. Um, so anyone that wants to hear the whole thing, because it is, it is smashing. It yes. is. <laughs> It is so, so beautiful, and um, uh, I've received a lot of response on my page over, yes. your, you know, your experience. So many people resonating with your words and um, how beautiful the star seeds are and how they are changing this timeline and have changed this timeline and will continue to change this timeline. You're not done. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not done. But it is, the light is absolutely winning over the dark. Yes. There's no doubt yes. about that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That was one thing that I wanted to talk about. Um, so one thing that they talked about in our session was about how you can release fear from your body. Um, and I thought that that was such a beautiful message that they shared. They basically stepped in and said, can we speak? Can we say something? Um, and they started pulling the energy of fear from my body. Um, and I have this vivid memory basically of seeing them pulling like what looked like cords and icky energy. It looked like almost like this black muddy tar from my heart chakra and heart space. And I started seeing flashbacks of different memories from my life that caused me fear basically and it was amazing to see how far back it even went to when I was in the womb basically and my yes. mom was pregnant with me um it showed how fearful basically my own mom was of becoming a mom and you know would she do a good enough job um I think that also gave me additional perspective about my mom um you know, my mom and I have a difficult relationship and it was healing to see that she really viewed me in such an important light when even I was so minuscule, basically. Um, and she was just so fearful because she had had so much fear implanted in herself by her own parents. Um, so it gave me additional perspective. Um, but they basically started saying that everybody at home can release fear in the same way if they so choose to do that. Um, right. They made a point of saying you and your intentions are so powerful. State that intention to your spirit family. Ask them, help me to remove the energy of fear from my body while I sleep. And they said they will do that. They will absolutely facilitate that healing for anyone that asks that. So you can do that at home for yourself as well. Yes. I, I just shared yours on, on mine. It's such an important, um, such an important message. And I just want to say thank you for all the loves. Thank, thank you for the hearts. Thank you yes. for the follows. We, we've been, um, I, I see you guys and thank you. Thank you for joining us here. Um, yes. We appreciate you. And um, gosh, that's, so I want to know, <laughs> Um, when you discovered in your session that your best friend, you're, you're sitting, so it, for those of you that d have not heard it, the first scene in her regression, she was sitting 
at a beach on another planet. The sky was green. 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 <laughs> it, yeah. It's similar to Dr. Seuss, you guys. Okay. Yeah. Really. Um, and colors that you, we don't even have here. I hear that a lot about, you know, what is going on in other planets and the colors and right. So yes. the water was what color? Uh, it was almost like this clear, but it had this purple hue Ew. to it. And what I realized later was I was seeing the reflection of the purple sun on the water. You asked me later what color was color the sun. sun. <laughs> it was purple. So I was seeing the what? reflection of the sun on the water. I was like, oh my gosh, this is like mind blowing. <laughs> yes. The sand okay. was blue, y'all. Everything on the blue. ground was blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the rose. <laughs> beautiful. I know. Yeah, lots. That's beautiful. Thank you. And so you're sitting there um, on the beach and there was an energy next to you, which you discovered was someone very special to you. This energy you loved very much, your best friend. And when I asked you, um, can they show you who they are in your life today? And so why don't you tell everybody who it is? <laughs> It was my husband now, yeah. and that just, ah, uh, y'all, it was so emotional. Um, my, for those of you who don't know me very well, like my husband and I, he is truly like the yin to my yang. Um, he's an Aquarius, but he is the most grounded Aquarius. Um, he grounds me and I'm an earth sign. <laughs> so he truly just anchors my energy. Um, but there was something so beautiful about the fact that he was sitting with me. He was my very best friend and he was trying to convince me basically to go to earth one more time because that's kind of what he does now. I'm very much so a homebody and he's the one basically that gets me out of my shell. It gets Aww. me out and about. Um, so he tells me in that session or, you know, while we were sitting together he starts showing me pictures of what looked like um, a nuclear bomb going off on earth. Yeah. I realized later that he was showing me pictures of the Trinity nuclear testing um, that happened prior to uh, Hiroshima and things like that. Um, yeah. He was showing me basically the first bomb that they, they detonated. Uh, wow. And he was telling me that I, it was really important for me to go to earth that I only had to go one more time. <laughs> That yeah. if I went, that he would go with me um, mm -hmm. and that I wouldn't be alone. He showed me basically like this line of people in spirit standing in front of me um, yeah. that were all with me. Um, and that was a theme that kind of continued through the, the session yes. was to tell everybody that no one is ever alone. No. That you may feel physically alone in this life, but there are so many people in spirit that are here with you, that are supporting you that walk with you in this life, that guide you, that are that little whisper in your ear. Um, so if you feel alone, just know you're not yeah. alone. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yes. So, so wait, I have a question. Yeah. What did your husband say <laughs> when you told him of who uh -huh. he was, when he heard, you, you let him hear it, right? <laughs> did you play that part? No. <laughs> I it I truly have only just now, probably in the last two days, been able to watch the full session oh, from yeah. start to finish. Um, I told him just a little bit, um, yeah. but bless his heart, my husband, he doesn't <laughs> entirely believe in everything that I do. He supports everything you know that I believe in. Um, but I will probably tell him little by little. Um, I think on a soul level, oh, my husband probably knows all of this stuff. <laughs> he sure does. Yeah. I he's the one that was... he's the one that is literally his astral body is right next to you going, come on, get up. We have places to go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, right? That's so right. <laughs> and he has no memory of it. <laughs> mm -mm. It's so funny because, I mean, my husband is truly just the sweetest, but he he was raised by a Presbyterian minister. He goes to church every week. Um, you know, he volunteers with his church. He's just the sweetest. Um, yeah. So I just love it that 
he was basically, you know, this advanced being sitting next to me, telling me like how important it was for us to go back, basically, you know, to lend of our energy one more time and help, you know, raise the collective consciousness, basically, that it even made a point of saying like the energy will be different if we don't go. So never, never believe that one person can make a difference. It was very important basically for me to know that every single person that's here lends up their energy in a very unique way. Yes. You carry, uh, it's like this, um, well, just, it's a ripple, you know, yes. it's a pulsing of, of light and energy that, that you carry. And I think that the star seeds are strategically placed you know, yes. you know, in advance where you're going to be, where you're going to live. And it's very, very strategic where, um, where you guys are, you know, geographically. Mm -hmm. Right, right. They showed me this image also in a dream. Um, it, it basically kind of reminded me of like a cell tower. And I was seeing this pinging going off from my own energy. And they showed me this big map, basically, of everybody in the world how everybody has this pinging resonance almost about them. But wow. each of us have this different resonance and it pings out differently into the world and creates this collective raising of the consciousness that we all kind of feel on this soul level, whether it's, you know, while we're in our astral state, but we all feel it in different ways. I don't know, it's interesting. <laughs> yes. So tell everybody, what did you look like? So I had uh, gray skin. Um, I looked like a typical gray alien. Um, but from my understanding, I had colored irises. Um, I had almost like blue irises and my eyes were just a little bit bigger than human eyes. Um, so it wasn't quite like the typical yeah. alien eyes that we see in movies and things like that. Um, I had fingers, but I only had three fingers. I had two big fingers on the thumb and my fingernails were short. Yeah, but my feet, y'all, my feet. That was weird. <laughs> my feet were like a horse's foot. I, it was all almost like a hoof, but it was different. I said, um, yeah. it felt all one, and my foot felt like it could bend backwards in a different way, almost. Isn't that so, gosh, wow? Yeah. <laughs> wow! 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 Yeah. Very wow. strange. <laughs> I am getting more and more and more sessions, even if you. Um, experience a past life regression it doesn't mean you're going to the past okay right you know um it, this is not what i say is it's not a roulette wheel where it's like any mini miny mo it's just going to land on a certain life and away we go no they're very strategic that they show you what what is in your best interest today and so you may you know choose a past life regression but all of a sudden it's converting into a galactic regression and you're learning about you know your your star family so uh i get a lot of people that it's like i want to know you know where i'm from and let me tell you that i experienced past lives qhht for years and I never saw myself on another planet and about three years ago I was getting ready to do um to have my my own um QHHT session on me and I just said look <laughs> I normally don't I always tell people leave it up to them and I have for years and years and this mm -hmm. time I'm like please don't show me another earth life Okay. <laughs> I've had it with the earth lives. <laughs> I, that's, yeah, enough already. And here I am regressing people to these fabulous, you know, planets. And oh, I'm on the spaceship. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like this. I'm like, wow, right? <laughs> and, yeah, that's me. And so I was just like, I'm over it. I'm overseeing myself on the prairie, can't doing this and with a pail or, you know, living in a hut. I'm just, I don't, I don't want it. I'm done. Nice. And so, boy, they listened. <laughs> they listened. Um, and gosh, I was so bummed because um, I, the recording did not, did not, did not work. Right. 
Oh, and man. you know, that happens. It happens sometimes. Um, but I, I've had many, many, many lives on other planets. And it's like, why weren't they showing me that? Um, mm-hmm. Some pretty incredible stuff. You know, I've been sort of like a scientist. Um, I, I did interdimensional travel. And um, I would collect the Earth from different planets and take it back to see what planets are inhabitable, right? Oh, wow, gotcha. That was important. A cedar, yeah, <laughs> cedar. <laughs> that was important. Um, wow. But I remember um, the, the, the recording that didn't, re- that it didn't record that session, it was really cool. I landed on a planet and I was, I, I came on a ship and I got out of the ship and I was walking And I sort of was waiting and I knew I was waiting for someone to come get me. And then this, okay, remember back to the future, the hoverboard? Yeah. (laughs) Wow. Okay. Imagine a hoverboard the size of a car, like a size of a limousine. Let's say that it was this clear acrylic platform and it was, coming from up I could see him coming there's a man on it like a being and he's coming down 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 in this enormous hoverboard and I'm telling you these people that are writers for back to the future and all these future they know they know yeah there is so much that what you see in movies is like they're getting it from time travel right? Uh-huh. Just time trap. I have those sessions too, where my clients are time traveling in their sessions. Okay. Yeah. Oh my I have a playlist. Gosh. <laughs> have a playlist. My gosh, I got to watch that. So interesting. But yeah, so he's coming down on this giant hoverboard and it was clear. I remember I could see right through it and I just t- step on it. And we greet each other telepathically and whoosh, we, we were just going, going. And it was like my Uber driver. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Your galactic Uber driver. <laughs> totally. <laughs> and we're, and, and I, he takes me to um, this civilization that seemed, it was weird. It was advanced, but not. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I went there and they, they, I'm taken to this arena where I am the um, uh, keynote speaker. <laughs> okay. Oh I'm my like, gosh. <laughs> yeah. I'm a keynote speaker. <laughs> and, okay. And oh my God. Um, I'm speaking to all of them telepathically. But what I was doing was thanking them. I was there to thank them because. Um, they had done something very big, like helped another planet, another civilization. Mm -hmm. And so this was um, out of respect. I was showing up and appearing to, you know, to speak to them. And gosh, darn it. Yeah, none of that was recorded. But see how I remember, you know, you don't forget. And that was three years ago when I had that session. Yeah, still remember it. Yeah. Oh, and... That planet, you know, when you see Maui or Hawaii from a helicopter and you're seeing the green majestic mountains, right? That was, that was what I saw. Wow. It was stunning. This planet was so green and beautiful with these mountains. It looked like Hawaii. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love it. (laughs) Yes, I love it. I just had this thought as you were talking. Um, (laughs) There was a part in my session um, where Myra was taking me basically like into the center of my planet. And I was seeing what looked almost like this monolith or bell tower. I just had this flash of the moon tarot card. Um, You see these monoliths uh, and towers in the corner of the moon tarot card. It, that tower looked very similar to the monolith on the moon tarot card. <laughs> wow. Interesting. <laughs> very interesting. Yes. Wow. How 
cool. Very well, cool. I am just, I'm so happy that you were able to ex- re-experience and see um, these mysteries from 2019, 2020, <laughs> that, you know, what really happened. And guys, if you have experiences like that, you know, you're, you're, for, for certain reasons, they do pull out the memory um, for certain reasons. Perhaps you're not ready. You know, you're, you're just not ready. Um, but I'm, I'm so happy that they showed it to you. The same thing with Eva Evangeline. She's a, a, a content creator here. She had an experience. I, I sh- have her whole session also on my YouTube channel. And she had an, an experience in Sedona when she was in college. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. So she went to Arizona State and they were going to Sedona for you know, a little r- retreat thing. And there was a bonfire and everybody was going to meet at the bonfire. And when her and her friend were walking down the hill to the bonfire, she sees this seven foot tall man leaning against a tree over yonder. Okay, just way over there. She's never seen him before, but she tells her friend, I'll meet you at the bonfire. I'll, I, I, I need to go over here. She knew, she didn't know how she knew this man, seven feet tall. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so she walks over to him and he's huge. She's petite and he, he's huge. And she walks right up to him and she said, how do I know you? And he says, I'm Pleiadian and so are you. And she, yeah, oh I'm getting, gosh. I'm getting angel bumps right now. Just, Me oh, too. Her, <laughs> her story was so cool. So cool. And um, he started telling her stuff and he says, do you want to see, do you want to see? And she leaves with this man. Okay. In a car. Oh, he oh was my gosh. Yeah. In a car. He had a car. He basically went into a body that matches his stature. Okay. So mm-hmm. he, uh, yeah, he's sort of like, um, you know, like a body snatcher, <laughs> but a, a borrower, yeah. <laughs> but a good one. And she gets in the car with him and he's going to take her to like really important spots yeah. in Sedona. And there, there's a famous spot there that is a vortex and he takes her there and they're sitting on this rock. And he starts telling her about the dimensions, okay? And then he tells her, look up. And she looks up and there's the mothership, okay? And so she wanted me, so she doesn't remember anything. She remembers seeing it. And he says, do you want to go in? And she said, hell yeah. (laughs) Yes, I do. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And so they went in and her memory was erased. Okay. That's where Myra comes in. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. And so if you want to hear, um, her, her session is on my YouTube. I don't remember what I called it, but you, you can see her laying down. She's laying down and I, you know, it's the zoom, Um, and it was so, it was so good. It was so good. And, um, she ended up channeling Ashtar, um, a lot of information, a lot of information was, was channeled. Um, just beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Oh my gosh. I've got to watch that. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So if you have, um, a thought that you cannot reach, right? a memory you cannot reach, know that it can be accessed in hypnosis. It absolutely can. It can be accessed through meditation, but it's going to take some time, you know, and some people like, I don't want to wait. I, you know, I don't want to wait. I want to get in there. And I've had some really wonderful experiences, including yours, where we just tap in and we just respectfully ask, can we see it? What happened that day? Yes. Right. It's so interesting too, y'all, because um, that was something else that I wanted to tell you. Uh, towards the end of the session, 
Myra basically will ask, um, or at least she did in my session, if there was any upgrades that were available to me or if they wanted to do a healing on me, essentially. And they said yes. So they started working on me and they started saying that I don't rest enough and that they were going to implant uh, intentions of deep rest so that I would rest yeah. in the coming days. I have never been a good sleeper. I have slept better than I remember ever in my life since the session, Myra. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> I love like, that. Literally hours after the session, I was so just jazzed up. The energy was really high and I started feeling sleepy and I thought, ooh, I should probably rest. So I went to bed early that night. I'm usually up and down all night. Not that night. Oh my gosh. Wow. Or the next night or the next <laughs> night. <laughs> so I'll take it. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's beautiful. There's yes. nothing like good hard rest. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. So, but that was something that I was going to ask you. Do you, does that seem to be a typical thing for people where they notice they receive like physical healings during their sessions as well? Oh, yes. Yes. Wow. A lot of, I would say 70% um, of my clients will uh, release a trauma, pull an, we pull an energy cord, something that um, even today um, I was able to, there, there was a, a client in Canada um, and she was having an experience where we had to pull some, some cords. Sometimes it's here in the neck or in the heart and sometimes it's, you know, in your sacral, you just, you don't know. Um, and there are just these, yeah, like you said, these yucky cords, they're energetic cords or attachments. And, um, I just love to call on archangels as well. You know, just bring in the entire divine team, your team, my team. And I call in some ascended masters and, uh, to help in the healing. And for the most part, you, when you sit up, you're like, you feel a shift, you feel different. You feel lighter, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes, it is, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it was amazing to feel, y'all. I had been really sick, kind of in the weeks leading up to this session, but I was determined. I asked my spirit guides, "Do I need to move the session?" And they said, "No. All you have to do is lay there." Oh, okay. <laughs> really? So I, I went into the, that. yeah. Okay. I went into the session feeling a little bit not sick, but I was definitely trying to be on the mend basically. Um, mm -hmm. And that was another part of the session. Basically at the end, they said, she's been sick. We're going to pull the remainder of that illness from her body. Yes. Um, and I, I did not feel the same going out of the session than I did going in. Wow. Um, I was so tired and just kind of, you know, just felt a little rundown going into it. I felt so much better afterwards. And I was even your, like in disbelief. <laughs> Yeah, and that's your higher self. The, the, when you get sick, it's it's a message saying, rest, stop, right? right. Slow down. And when right. you don't slow down, they're going to, we're going to make you sick. <laughs> right, exactly. We're exactly. Give you a cold. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> that's exactly yes. what happened too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, wow. let's um let's maybe answer some questions here. I I I don't know if there's questions. Uh, let me roll back. Let's see. Um, I saw a couple here. Um, let's see. Someone asked uh, up at the very beginning, basically, if you can get stuck in that trance state, basically, when you're under regressive hypnosis. No. Gotcha. And um, it's like saying, do I get stuck in sleep? No. Ah. That's a great analogy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so sleep is even deeper, right? So delta mm -hmm. is sleep. And where you are when you are in a trance, a hypnotic trance, is theta, which is the state before you fall asleep. So it's impossible. No. And I know that that is a fear some people say, and it's like impossible. Um, there's not any, you know, someone mentioned... Uh, in my last live, like in someone got stuck in hypnosis in a movie, and I'm like, it's oh just, right, 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 yeah, that's that's not real, right. and you'll not find any history of that ever happening. It's not possible, right? Gotcha, gotcha. So, that's good to know. <laughs> but yeah, great question, great question. Next, what? I know. 
<laughs> Let's see. What else has everybody got to say here? A lot of people sound like they are interested in having sessions. So how can people go about doing that if they would like to book a session with you? Yeah, so they can go my my um on my profile page there's a link. The link will take you everywhere. It, um I have my podcast now, although that link is not there. Check out my podcast, Past Lives with Myra Rath. That's me. And I'm sharing. So if you like podcasts um, and you want to listen to some of the regression stories, you can check that out. But um, go to the link and that'll take you to my website. Yes. Yeah. Um, somebody else asked, um, what if you can't relax enough to get into a hypnotic trance? Yes. And that can happen. Okay. Um, I would say, um, I would say one out of every 50 for me, because I, I take, you know, the time to prepare, right? right. The guidelines, I, I give you affirmations, and right. it works. It really, really works. But sometimes there's people like I had someone a few weeks ago and I'm, so, I felt so bad for her. Your environment is really important and I yes. cannot control your environment. And she was, she looked so relaxed going down, 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 down. But then apparently two floors above her, her husband, <laughs> She was in a low, he was laughing and she can hear him laugh. And what happens is when your environment isn't supporting you, you're, you're mad. You, you instantly go, oh my God, what is his problem? I told him <laughs> to be quiet. And all you're doing is pulling yourself out. Right. And so I lost her. I can't, the induction works. But your environment has to be quiet. Right. right. And um, she, was, I, she was crying. She was so upset because she had waited so long. And um, mm -hmm. so I just, yeah, I just basically gave her her money back. And I said, fix it. <laughs> okay. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Fix it That's and um, come on back when you know, you know, because kids, you, you can't pay them enough to be quiet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've had people check into hotels, okay, because right. their house, their house is not going to, they already know. No, my right. dog, my, my, right. yeah, my dog, my dogs, my kids, right. there's no way, and they will check into a hotel. And, um, right. so there are, there's going to be occasions, but for the most part, if you have the desire to do it, I give you everything you need to support and you are good to go. You are good mm -hmm. to go. I have to say, y'all, as a Virgo and as somebody who loves to plan ahead of time, I really appreciated that about how Myra really sets things up. Um, she will send a whole slew of information of how to prepare for your session long before that day so that you have a very good understanding of the equipment that you'll need for that session, how that session could, you know, set up and flow for yourself. Um, you know, she really includes, you know, if you have loud pets that are barkers, you know, make arrangements for those things. And I appreciated that because we have two pups and one of them is, is a barker. Um, my session was also kind of during the prime time for the mailman to come. Um, <laughs> so bless my husband's heart. I told my husband about the session, how long I'd waited to book it. Um, and he actually came home early from work, took the dogs down into the basement, got everything nice and quiet. Um, yeah. So it's, <laughs> It's lots of preparatory work, like she says. Um, she also gives you a really awesome meditation to listen to. And I have to say, just listening to that meditation, it prepares you for oh, the yeah. induction. She kind of walks you through the mm -hmm. beginning stages of the induction. And it made my meditations deeper. Now I can sink into meditation deeper and faster than I have in the past just by doing that practice meditation. Oh, wow. Wow. That's yes. wonderful. I have a story. <laughs> I don't know if you know, um, uh, Candace Dalton, she's a medium. She is the, I've heard of her. Candace Dalton. She's the niece of Maureen. Yes. Maureen, um, 
another medium, Maureen. Oh, gotcha. From Long Island. She's there. They're from back at Boston or something. But anyway, gotcha. Candace lives here in, in LA and um, uh, she is just a doll. And I drove to Burbank. She had, she had her pod- podcast and she wanted me to go and I did a session for mm-hmm. her <laughs> and we're in her living room and she, where she was so comfortable in her living room and where her dogs were beautiful there that he was just no at that time she only had one and he was just sitting there all curled up he was just a good boy mm-hmm. and all of a sudden <laughs> amazon shows up okay at the door in the middle of her she's already in the past life and he came in like the SWAT team banging on the door so oh loud. She jumped up. The dog is like, rah, rah, rah. And it's just like barking. <laughs> and it was so crazy. And we're, who bangs on the door like that? And she was, she was so upset. But here's oh the thing. When you're in it, you're already there. You're already there. And I said, mm-hmm. lay, lay back down, lay back down. It's okay. Lay back down. Close your eyes. Just take a breath. Just take a breath. Let's go right back to that scene. And yes. boom, you're there. When, you, when you're in that theta state, think about like when you wake, go to, um, okay, it's three in the morning and your bladder is waking you up, right? Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're asleep, asleep. And now your bladder is like, wake up, wake up. When right. you roll out of bed to go to the bathroom, you're not awake. Awake. No. You are still in theta and you're going right. to the bathroom. And think about how quiet your mind is when you're sitting on the toilet. Right. right. You are quiet. <laughs> I don't turn right. I tell people I don't even turn lights on. I just do my thing and I'm done and I go right back to bed. And so even though you have this interruption, but it was not a good interruption for the podcast. And, but she edited that whole debacle. Out. <laughs> it, was, it was, yeah, it was shocking. Um, but yeah, that happened. And, you know, sometimes it happens. You don't have control over your environment. Right. 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 <laughs> exactly. Somebody else asked here, how long is a typical session? Well, um, a past life regression, those are 90 minutes, but I have um, several other um, sessions. I uh, conduct the life between lives. I have a new Akashic hypnosis where I take you to a past life and then we go to the Akashic records so that you can sit there with your guide. I mean, yeah, who doesn't want to do that? I know. (laughs) There with your guide and they they open up and they show you not everything. They will not show you everything. That's you don't have access to all of it. Um, but they'll show you what's important. They will show you what's important. On the average, people see about four. Um, and you see it when they open the book. It's almost like a screen. It's like you think it's this big book, but it's it's almost like a, an iPad, a big iPad. And they're showing you moving pictures. It's like, look, this is you. Um, that's you and you're... you're, you're um, chopping wood or whatever, and you're, you're, this is your contribution, you're, you guys are Native Americans, or, you know, and they'll show you, it's pretty cool. Um, wow. Yeah, so I have that. And then uh, the QHHT and My Soul Ascension, those are about four hours. So it really depends on, on um, what you're looking for. For, gotcha. for beginners, I highly, highly recommend to start with a past life regression, and um, and start there, especially if you're new to this and feeling a little nervous. Some people, um, I, I will say, they'll they want to jump straight to QHHT. And I had someone here last week that I, I said, "You're not ready." You know, after speaking with her, she was really, really in her head over too much. And I knew with QHHT, this is, you know. You've got to relax. You've got to relax Mm -hmm. and have the ability to channel your higher self. So we just pivoted. And I just said, I think this is what's better for you to just start off with the past life. And she did. And she did fine. She agreed. Um, I know some people want to go for that big one. But 
you are where you are and that's okay. You, you're okay where you are. And there's, there's no rush, you know, to, you can always, I don't want any. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, my son wants to make biscuits. I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Yes. Um, yeah, let's you know, see. I really want to also talk about you and your services. I went on your, um, I went on your, your link today. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I, and I saw, um, I saw that you offered like a, a remote cleansing of the house. Yes, I do. And I found that really interesting because I, you know, I have a lot of people coming in and out of my home. You know, I have my home office and although um, if prior to each session I have, I have a system um, I think, I think it's, I think it might be really nice for me to have something like that done and not to mention my house. I have it professionally feng shui every year, every year. So energetically um, things are where they're supposed to be. The elements are exactly where they are. Um, but I do have, and I love you guys, but you know, it is my home and you don't know what's coming in and what stays. And so right. um, I might, I might, um, call you about that <laughs> also <laughs> what she's talking about everybody I do I'm a Reiki master and teacher um, I do Reiki certifications and something that my clients asked me about over the years basically was a remote home cleansings especially once the pandemic started um, people were still interested in having their homes cleansed um, energetically and spiritually um but once the pandemic started, I wasn't traveling in the same way that I had been in previous years. So with distance Reiki, you know, they teach you that you can do any sort of healing or cleansing via distance, just, you know, through your intentions or by using a proxy. Um, and so that's what I do. I do that. Um, I also do meet your spirit guide sessions. Um, so if you've ever wanted to learn who your spirit guides are, meet them, find out any past life uh, interactions that you've had with those folks. Um, we also talk about those things. I channel that stuff during those sessions. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was the first thing I saw. And I just intuitively, I thought, this is something that I should probably do regularly. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, yeah. I would be honored to do that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, okay, let's see here. Um, let's see, did I miss any questions here? Um, yeah, I'm looking as well. Let's see. So uh, someone Alice here, someone here says that she's wanted to astral travel and still hasn't been able to. Mm, okay. So I can tell you what I do. Okay. Um, and you have to be patient. Okay. But what I have done when I want to astral travel and remember it, because remember you do it, you're doing it unconsciously. Okay. <laughs> but when you want to do it consciously, when I go to bed, I set the intention. I want to astral travel to a certain place. I want to go. And I've said, I want to see my brother who is on the other side. I want to see my brother. Usually it's that. Okay. That's the, that's the truth. I just, I want to see him. And, um, it doesn't happen on the first night. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next night I ask again and because sometimes they're busy, you know, right. <laughs> you guys have to understand that it's like, he's not going to drop everything. Yeah, I'm sure he's doing, Oh, my, Myra needs to see me tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Right>? me. <laughs> yeah. So it, so be patient and be consistent. And keep asking, and I'll never forget. And that's the beauty is when I travel, I remember every single part of it, okay? And so I've been able to astral travel and see my brother um, three times. And I haven't done it in a while. It's not something that I do, you know, constantly. I, I, um, I know he's good. I know he's doing great. He's been gone now 10 years. Um. But remember how I mentioned that the Evangeline who went to Sedona, right? And I, we did her session. 
Well, the night before her session, I sat down in my living room and I thought, okay, there's some questions. I, I had a feeling that we were, that this was going to be a big session. I just had a feeling, especially what she experienced in Sedona. Yeah. And I just knew it. And so mm-hmm. I sat there going, okay, what questions do I want to ask when she begins to channel? I told her to give me a list of questions and I also had questions. So I'm sitting there writing, writing, writing. And then I realized I want to astral travel. I want to see the mothership, right? Yeah. I've never seen that. And I would love to experience that, you guys. (laughs) So see that one, there was no waiting. Okay. No waiting. I went to bed and I reminded them, okay, come and get me because I I really want to feel what it was that she, so I can have my experience. We can talk about it tomorrow. (laughs) Okay. And sure enough, let me tell you, I'm laying in bed and I felt my body. I wasn't even asleep yet. And I felt the tugging like this. And I'm going, wait, I'm not asleep. Let me go to sleep. I I literally, I've never in my life felt that ever. That my, I could feel myself wanting to check out. Okay. Oh, wow. And I'm in my mind. I'm going, no, no, no. I'm not asleep. You got, wait. And I knew they were there to come and get me. I don't know who it was, but the room was vibrating. Okay. Wow. And I said, don't leave, but come back. (laughs) <laughs> don't leave wait until I fall asleep and I swear five minutes later I felt that tugging again I'm like I'm almost there just wait five more minutes you know <laughs> yeah and finally I fell asleep I dropped and <laughs> Myra went whoosh out and I I was flying up I felt the cold and I felt someone holding me Wow. And I knew I the fact that I knew that I was going on the Pleiades mothership, you mothership. know. Yeah. And I'm probably wow. saying it wrong. It's not, it's the Galactic Federation. That that's that's wow. the ship I'm going to. And I could hear myself screaming, "Yeah! Yeah! Yeah!" I'm flying up. Do you think I knew someone was holding me? I didn't even think to look at who it was. In the morning, when it was all (laughs) over, I'm like, why didn't you look? (laughs) I felt held. Sometimes, you know, you just, like, I don't know. I I wasn't thinking. I was so excited. And so I'm going up, up, up. And what happens is, before you know it, you're going from 3D to 4D. You're already entering. And you go through these dimensions. Boom, boom. You're entering them fast. Mm -hmm. And so the minute I was in 4D or, you know, whatever dimension I was, I can start to see little ships flying, like little ships. And I'm like, oh, my God. (laughs) And I'm flying. flying, flying. (laughs) Okay. You're so excited. (laughs) I'm so excited. And then so this whole thing, I have it on where I was telling Evangeline my experience. I have that on my TikTok. It was hilarious. And, um. The next thing I know, I look up and there she is, the ship. And I can't even, I felt like what I said was an ant, like the size of an ant compared to the size of the ship. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am not kidding you. It wow. is, a, it, it's, it's more than a floating city. It is, this is a country. <laughs> Oh it, my but, God. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And what I was telling Evangeline is it, it was so big that we had to kind of curve. My flight pattern was going up, up, up. And we had to go this way and go up and around to enter the top. Okay. Oh and she confirmed with me that's how she got in through the top when she was in Sedona through the top and she says yeah yeah there's this thing in the top and that's where the ships come in and out of right (laughs) okay oh my god okay yeah so I arrive and that's where my memory 
was wiped. <laughs> oh, yes. wiped. And I woke up in the morning and I knew that I had this experience. I knew I had it. And I was like, the only thing I remembered, I will tell you, I have one memory of being in the ship. And it was interesting. I was, I went into a room and there was a table, a long table, and there was food, fruits, and f- lots of food. And I remember saying, you guys eat? <laughs> like, food? <laughs> yeah. And Evangeline said, yes, they eat. They have food because the humans, there's humans on the ship, scientists, humans from here that work on that ship. Doesn't that make oh sense? Oh my gosh, that makes sense. Totally, totally. That there are human beings on that ship working and of course they need food. <laughs> Good that was food. That was their craft service basically. <laughs> <laughs> ET craft service. <laughs> yes, yes. Wow. So when she was channeling all of these questions, she was channeling um, Commander Ashtar. And um, at one point I said, okay, at the very end, I said, so I had an experience last night. Someone came to get, someone came to get me. I, I had requested to visit your ship um, last night. I said, who came to get me? Cause I, like, I forgot to look. <laughs> and and uh, Ashtar said it was one of your guides, someone that you trusted that, came to pick you up and took you there. And I said, okay. So I remember everything outside of the ship, but the moment I went in, what happened? (laughs) What happened? Can you tell me a little bit about my experience? And I can't, I'm going to butcher this, but she basically said I was, the first thing they do is they take you to a room and lay you down and they just clean your energy. They just And they use crystals. I think the table that you lay on is made of crystal. And Mm -hmm. it is just wiping you energetically, um, which I think is so beautiful. And I was like, okay, I like that. So, um, yeah, I guess I was there and hung out for a little bit. And I had no memory of coming back. I never have memory of coming back from my travels. Mm -hmm. So. Wow. How cool. (laughs) So try that and just ask and then ask and ask again. But when you ask, also tell them where you want to travel to. It's like, that makes sense. It's, well, where do you want to go? (laughs) Right? Yeah, absolutely. There's a vast amount of places around, you know, the cosmos (laughs) that you can go. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Wow. Let's see. I don't know how old these are guys. Sorry. Um, uh, yes. Yeah, so if anyone is looking to, for bookings, just click the link. And also Christina has a link on her profile. That's how I found yes. she does the, um, you know, her services. So check yes. her out as well. Yes, let's um, see. I don't see any more questions on my end. It looks like. Um, I've only had one. Is it recommended to do the more often? Um, so I don't know if that's a Reiki session, uh, or hypnosis with hypnosis, use your discernment. You've been many, 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 you know, you've been here and there and everywhere. So it's, it's, it's up to you. If you're, if you're curious about your soul's evolution and what you've experienced, go for it. And what about with Reiki? What do you suggest? So I usually say, give yourself about at least three weeks in between your sessions. That gives your body energetically some time to kind of, you know, coalesce, let everything integrate after that energy work. Um, So I say at least three weeks. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, (laughs) Connie. If you're still here, thank you. She is the one that had a session and um, was writing here to someone. Tawny, thank you. Let's see. Um, sorry, I'm scrolling. I'm looking. I know. Same, everybody. (laughs) Are writers typically channelers? I'm just at the very beginning of my spiritual awakening. So I'm not sure what we missed about writing. Um, someone was right. 
Someone said I'm a writer, wrote two books, soon to be published. Congratulations. Um, so I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm a little lost. Um, <laughs> um, I, I don't see any more quest. Wait, is that a question? Any advice for meditation? My mind is overactive. Oh, okay. You so, go first. <laughs> I would say, so prior to doing this, you all, I really loved binaural beats um, for meditation. Um, you can go on YouTube. Um, there are a ton of different binaural beats, um, but it basically induces a particular brain frequency. I like theta. Um, theta binaural beats are probably my favorite. Um, but since I've done this session, I really love to listen to Myra's preparatory meditation um, that she sends it's very relaxing <laughs> yes yes I um in November I started transcendental meditation so check out tm.org um and what what they do is they give you a mantra and I have found that your personal mantra all you have to do is 20 minutes um in the morning and 20 minutes at night and the, um, the benefits of TM are just incredible. So check out Transcendental on YouTube, but then go on tm.org. Um, back in the day, <coughs> TM was very, very expensive. And I think during COVID and, and all of that, I, I think they realized that meditation is not just for the rich and famous because this was a, this was very trendy for um celebrities okay mm -hmm. and okay. what i discovered is that they changed all of that to make it affordable for all for everyone and so it's based on it, it's based on your income okay and they don't check so they use the honor system <laughs> and um and it's been it's been wonderful. It has really made um, channeling. Or I'm sorry, not channeling. Although I do channel, um, it has made my meditation practice so much easier. Having that mantra in mind, and one of the things that they taught me that I wasn't aware that has really helped me to convey to my clients is when. When, when I start with the hypnosis, or even if you start with the meditation that I give you, um, you're going to have random thoughts, right? right? It's just your, when you first begin to meditate, it's very normal for you to be pulled. What's for right. dinner? I got to pay that bill. Oh, wh where do I have to work tomorrow? Or what, you know, it, you just, so what, TM says is what you're actually doing is you're releasing stress. Each mm -hmm. time you, you have a thought, you're actually releasing stress. So it's okay. You're not doing anything wrong. You recognize the, the, um, the thought and then you let it go and then go back to your mantra. So it's mantra, 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 dinner. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Release mantra, mantra, mantra. I got to bathe the dog, <laughs> mantra, mantra, mantra. <laughs> right? So, you know, check it out. But there, there are many different ways of, um, of meditation to try to make it easy. So, yes. Somebody else said here, um, Christina, can you recommend a crystal to open communication with spirit guides? Um, I think probably some of my favorite crystals are, uh, so I use, um, a black kyanite. Um, I usually have this with me. It's Wait a, a minute. Can I see that? Yeah. Wait a second. Ah! I think I have that. And I didn't know yeah, that. Is that this? Oh my goodness. Look at that. Is it? Oh, what a little cutie. Is that, and then it's sort of like a rock on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. This one's kind of like this that too. A, this was a gift. So Ooh. what does it do? <laughs> so this is a great grounding crystal. Um, I just love to have it. You know, many of our spirit guides are of a really high vibration when they step into our space. Um, so helping you to stay grounded is very important. Um, amethyst is a really great one. Yeah. Spirit quartz is another great crystal um, to start communicating with your guides. Um, I usually say just let yourself be guided. 
if there's a crystal that grabs your attention, it's usually trying to get your attention for a reason. So let yourself be guided yeah. when you look for one. <laughs> and talk to your crystals. Tell, yes. tell your crystal what you want it to do. It it yes. it just sits there looking pretty. I want to share with you. Um, I just came back from uh, from uh, Joshua Tree, and I love love the. Hold on. Oh, can I flip my camera on on this? I'm not oh, sure. Oh, I, I can't, but okay. So wait, now I'm going to move my morning coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, so uh, I, I'm going to turn. Okay, so I just wanted to display because I, I just had crystals everywhere and I loved how they displayed them in the shop. So this is what I did. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Erica. Um, Thank you. There we go. I just put them on this wood platter and I have all my mini crystals here. Pretty. <laughs> yes. It's my little statement piece here. Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> I usually have two grounding crystals. I've got a snowflake obsidian here and my black kyanite. Um, for anybody that does this work kind of for a living or just, you know, on a consistent basis, spirits have a way of kind of making you a little dizzy sometimes. So I like to keep some grounding crystals around me. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I have so enjoyed um, talking with you, Christina. This has been a lot of fun. Um, I'm excited yeah. to share your session tomorrow. And um, you did so great. I'm so proud of you. Yeah, and, thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much for just allowing me to be able to utilize your services and I look forward to being able to work with you further. It's going to be really exciting. <laughs> yes, wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, thank you. for your support, for being and hanging out with us here. What, yes. what night is this? Is this uh, it's night? Monday. <laughs> it's Monday. See, I, yeah, I got it. Just the days just blend into each other. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me so, too. Yes. Thank, thank you, thank everybody, everybody, so much for your support, for your roses, for your gifts. Thank you so much. Everybody stay tuned. This won't be the last time we talk about this. <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. <laughs>